Hello students, welcome to another lesson presented by The Learning Depot. I'm Lulu. If you're new here, please consider subscribing and joining our growing learning community. And if you've already subscribed, welcome back. Today we'll continue with our lesson on phrasal verbs. Phrasal verbs are two-part verbs commonly used in the English language. In a previous lesson, you learned about the syntactic features of phrasal verbs, and I'll link the video up here and down below. And if you haven't watched it, make sure you do before continuing with this lesson. Today you'll learn about semantic features of phrasal verbs. You'll learn that phrasal verbs can be literal and figurative. You'll also learn about the particle and how it may show or give a sense of completion, orientation, and even movement to the main verb. This is lesson two of a three-part series on phrasal verbs. The lesson starts now. Phrasal verbs can be divided into two categories. Literal, which means the particle doesn't really affect the meaning. You can delete the particle without affecting the structure of the verb or the sentence, like in these examples. Literal phrasal verbs do not depend on the particle or on context to derive their meaning. The verb proper can stand alone, give away, break down, tear up. The company will give away a prize. We can remove the particle away and we can still understand that something will be given a prize. Break down, broke down. The car broke down on the highway. The car broke on the highway. You can tell that the car stopped working. Tear up. The cat's long claws will tear up the curtains even if we remove the particle, up, tear means that the curtains will be shredded. You still understand what the main verb is expressing. However, most phrasal verbs are idiomatic and figurative, meaning that the phrasal verb cannot be divided by its individual parts. The verb proper and the particle it is said that these phrasal verbs have semantic unity. Figurative phrasal verbs have semantic unity. These verbs consist of a single semantic unit. So you cannot separate the main verb from the particle. These verbs act as a single unit of meaning. Blow up in this context means to call or text many, many times. She blew up my phone within the period of an hour. My mom blows up my phone when I don't answer her the first time she calls. Call off. In this instance, call off means to cancel. She called off her engagement last month. She canceled it. <laughs> Turn in. Go to bed. I'm so tired, I'm going to turn in early. In addition to being idiomatic, the same phrasal verb can have multiple meanings. This means they exhibit polysemy, like in these examples. Many phrasal verbs have multiple meanings, like check out, which can mean to settle your hotel bill before you leave. or can also mean to investigate something. Check out the new mall. Or it could mean to prove something true or correct. Your story does not check out. Or when you go to the supermarket, the cashier will check out your merchandise. You can also check out books from the library. Figurative phrasal verbs may also lack semantic extension. This means that you cannot generalize them. Many phrasal verbs are not able to be generalized. Making a generalization in language allows us to take a concept or a general statement 
by inference and apply it to a new situation or a new case, and we can apply it more broadly. In and out are opposites. So a logical generalization or inference would be to think that give in and give out are also opposites, but this is not the case. In this context, give in means to finally agree to what someone wants. While in another context, give out can mean to be exhausted or to be completely used up. So therefore you cannot generalize that because give in means one thing give out would mean its complete opposite. And this is what we mean when we say that many phrasal verbs lack semantic generalization or extension. The best way to determine their meaning, as with most phrasal verbs, is through context. When looking at phrasal verbs, the particle plays an important role because the particle may give a sense of completion orientation, and even movement to the main verb. This is because the meaning of the particle is also affected by our own experiences and how we equate or associate ideas with movement, power, and realization. These abstract ideas influence how we use the particle in phrasal verbs. So for example, if something is up, it's usually seen as something positive or increasing in value. In contrast, if something is down, it is often seen as a negative or decreasing in value. We can apply these concepts in both a literal and figurative use. Some particles give the sense of completion, continuity, movement, and orientation, like the particle up, or of continuity, like the particle on. or the particle out, indicating movement, or the particle away, indicating orientation. Be sure to go back and review the parts of the lesson that you didn't understand. Check out the previous lesson on the syntactic features of phrasal verbs which is linked below. And before you go, please like, share, and leave a comment. Also, if you haven't already subscribed, please do so as it helps out a small channel. I thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye.